Hello and welcome. Gather yourselves for this, the 26th episode of Massacre Radio. As always, I am your host, Members Only Dave, and today on the show I'll be joined by none other than Dark Iron Gaines. He's made some waves in the fitness and bodybuilding meme pool over the past few years, so I'll be catching up with him, asking about his band 10 Scoops and why he refers to Planet Fitness as Planet Sh- We'll get to all that and more as we work our way to the ultimate goal. I'm talking about gains here, people. Come on! This is Massacre Radio. Are you sick of Blu-ray and 4K and just want to bask in the warmth of analog goodness but can't afford $2,000 for an original Tales from the Quad Dead Zone? Show those fellow collectors that you have the best collection with new VHS releases in a fully enclosed slipcase, all from Massacre Video. Choose from titles like 555, Black Devil Dawn from Hell, and Tales from the Quad Dead Zone. VHS tape included, all for only $39.99 per tape. It looks amazing on a shelf. Get yours today. WKMA Cleveland. Whoa! This is Radio Land, huh? And HD2 Station. I know what you're thinking. This is weird, huh? But I can handle it. <laughs> Massacre Radio. My next guest is all set. You know him from his viral Instagram page where he posts content largely centered around lifting, bodybuilding, powerlifting. And anything extreme, it's Dark Iron Gains. Thank you so much for your time today. How are we doing? Good, man. How about yourself? Hey, if I were any better, there'd be two of me. So, there you go. Let me start by asking, you know, seeing as how we are at the start of a new year, one of the big things people like to do is get a gym membership. And I know you mostly work out at home, but i got to ask you your thoughts on this yearly tradition of folks hitting the gym for half a month and calling it quits more often than not, do you applaud these folks for at least attempting a healthier lifestyle, or do you mostly see them as a joke? You know, I think it's good that they at least try for a little bit. I think it's better to at least give it a try and fall off than to not try at all. You got to kind of go in with a game plan, and I don't think a lot of them really go in with a game plan. I think, like, whatever their goal is, if it's to, to put on muscle or to lose weight or whatever, they kind of just go in thinking, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to put on some muscle. They don't think how they're going to do it, and they don't have, like, an actual strategy when it comes to doing those things. There, there's one thing they don't understand, too. A lot of people, you have to slowly taper up what you can do. Like, you can't just go in and and start jogging like 10 miles a day or whatever you have to kind of like take it one step at a time and I think a lot of people just don't have the patience to put up with that or, or to put in the effort to actually push themselves to get to a point where they can do something that's pretty hard. I read that you also kind of have an axe to grind so to speak with Planet Fitness because of how unserious they are about the whole thing. What exactly does that mean? How are they unserious about fitness and talk a little bit about the lunk alarm. So uh Planet Fitness on my page, I call it Planet Shitness. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when it comes to Planet Fitness, their whole like strategy at first was kind of just like demonizing people who take lifting serious, you know, like the whole lunk thing. I think that was kind of dumb. And I think it's just kind of playing into the normie stereotype of what lifters are. They're kind of like meathead bro dude stereotype. I think that they thought it was going to be relatable when they did it. You know, I don't know necessarily if it was. Like, I don't know if many people actually really sign up for Planet Fitness because of that. Because everyone I know who goes to Planet Fitness is because it's cheap. You know, I think if you're going to the gym, you definitely should take it serious. And like I said, you have to have a game plan when you go in. You know, when it comes to them call, calling people who actually lift and take it serious lunk, you know, it's just kind of playing into the mainstream lifter oppression that happens, you know, the demonization of real lifters. So I think it's kind of a dumb approach, and the lunk alarm is just, like, over the top. I think it's great. I like the lunk alarm, you know. If it goes off, it means you're actually doing something. So your home gym, the space where you work out, is called the lifter compound. What are some key features you'd say every lifter compound needs to be effective and based? So key features for the lifter compound, you got to have a power rack. Of course, you're going to want the Olympic barbell, 45 pound Olympic barbell, and then however many plates you can get your hand on or your hands on. Okay. I'd at least start off with four 45 pound plates, you know, four 25 pound plates and maybe like four 10 pound plates. Just, just to, you know, kind of have an even spread. That way you have, you kind of have a lot to work with. Once you get that set up, you know, I'd say get, get a solid set of dumbbells. And then, dude, freaking deck that place out. Make it look sick. Put up flags, put up posters. 
get a good speaker system, a good sound system, put a TV in there, oh, yeah. and get a mini fridge. A oh. mini fridge stocked full of Zero Ultras. That way you can <laughs> grab it anytime you want. Dark Iron Gains is my guest today, so walk me a little bit through the rise, your rise on Instagram with the page and all that. It seems like it happened in a flash of what, like six months, was it? You know, I had started Dark Iron Gains, and I had just talked about this in an interview like a few days ago, too, which is funny, but I had uh, started Dark Iron Gains like in 2016 or so, and, you know, originally it started off as just me wanting to repost funny gym content, but kind of like a more esoteric approach, not necessarily like the funny normie gym content, but the stuff that you were seeing on like underground blogs or, or whatever, forums, whatever you want to call them. I got to the point where I ran out of content like relatively quick. So I was like, you know what? Like I can't find this content anywhere. I mean, I can, but it's few and far between. So I'm just going to start making my own. I made my own for a little bit and then I fell off in probably 2016, late 2016. I fell off from making memes. Whenever COVID happened, like the page really blew up because, you know, more people were on their phone, more, a lot more free time. People were scrolling through stuff. So the page kind of took off from there. And now it's still it still has a really great engaging audience and I'm I'm really thankful. It's a cool little like niche underground audience of, you know, lifters who kind of relate on the same things, you know. So what post was it that really shifted the focus onto you and went viral? Because if I'm not mistaken, I think it was the Arnold running image, was it not? Yeah, yeah. That was uh <laughs> There was a few. There was a few. There was the Arnold running one that really took off. I'm trying to think. That one was the biggest one though, because uh, you know, for whatever reason, PewDiePie liked that one, and he like <laughs> had a thing. People would like, you know, submit their Arnold running meme to his Reddit or whatever. There's definitely been a few memes that have kind of taken off. I mean, the Michael Hearn one. I didn't. That one kind of. I didn't use that song, but Michael Hearn. That meme kind of inadvertently came from the Lifterverse. You know, it's not. I'm not gonna say came from me but it did come from the type of content i was doing like if i looked if i really looked it up i could probably find some other ones because i know there's been some other ones that have kind of like taken off but the arnold running one was the biggest one for sure let's talk about shadow banning have you ever had any instances on the dark iron gains page where you felt like that was that play for you getting shadow banned for one reason or another yeah, man. You know, at first it wasn't so bad. Like at first the shadow banning wasn't really like too bad. It wasn't until like, I don't even, it wasn't until like Trump and Biden, like <laughs> that, that election really for whatever reason. Yeah. Like I think they were just like ramping, ramping up the like, I don't know, the shadow ban. If they thought you were associated with some sort of thing, you know, like they would just shadow ban you. And I think that happened a lot. You know, I got lumped up with kind of the more right leaning people, which I'm not condemning either one, but you know, the page kind of got lumped up because I guess all the conspiratorial stuff that I yeah. kind of just talk about for fun. And it got, it got kind of lumped up with all the other sort of like pundits and stuff like that. And, and I think from there it did get shadow banned. And I, and I noticed like a huge, like a dramatic increase in or a dramatic decrease in my reach around that time. And it's really never, it's never really bounced back from then. I mean, for a little bit, it, seemed like it when they were trying to compete against tiktok and that's like you know when i was posting reels and stuff like the engagement was real high but even then what happened with posting reels is they were paying you know they were they were offering these bonuses for posting reels because they wanted to compete with tiktok and so you know they were paying for the amount of views you got on your reels so i signed up for it and i was getting of course i was it was monetized which was cool but what sucked is as soon as it got monetized it was like the reels would get like half the reach they were getting before so it was just one of those things where it was a noticeable difference little did i know that they would kind of shadow cuck you which you know i learned the hard way in doing research for this call, I was taking in some content on YouTube, and there was a video in it where you get recognized by some kids, like some 10-year-olds, you know. What does it mean to you that your Dark Iron Gains content is being viewed by kids and that they might look at you as some sort of a role model? Uh, I mean, it's cool. There, there's been a couple times here recently, like I ran into some people at a Joey concert in Dallas and they recognized me and, and it was cool. We took pictures and stuff and I followed them and we kind of talked, followed them on Instagram though. It's funny. Every time somebody like recognized me or whatever, I'll just follow them back. Cause you know, they're, it's always like a cool interaction. Like I try to be like cool, you know, when I see them, I don't really put on like a face or anything like that. I just, I just try to be normal and, uh, like, yeah, it's cool. It's a cool thing. It's kind of surreal, but 
you know, whenever I meet these people, I, it's like, I don't kind of like look at it as if it's like them talking to me because they think I'm like some like cool influencer or something. For me, it's more of like, oh, they, they think it's cool that I'm an admin for, for this famous page. Like I'm just a pay, I'm the representative for the Dark Iron Games page. And they, then they just think that's cool. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really feel like, I don't, I don't look at myself at all, even remotely close to an influencer. I just kind of see myself more of like a famous admin or I mean, something. We're going to take a brief time out here on Massacre Radio and come back with more from our guest, Dark Iron Gaines, after this. Say, you got a nice form there, fellow pumper. Mind giving me a spot? Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> you don't care if I turn on a little bit of music first, do you? I want to get the juices flowing, you know? Whatever. Whoa, what are you doing? I love that song. Not in this year, Jim Sparky. I thought you'd turn on a radio program or a podcast or something. Ain't nobody trying to hear that mess. A podcast or a radio program? I'd never really listened to one before. What would you suggest? Here, check this year out. It's my new favorite. It's called Masker Radio. Masker Radio. Okay. No, not Masker. Massacre. This guy's great. Listen to this. You know what? Throw some extra extra tens on this bar. I'm going to go for a personal best. You ready? I don't know, man. Take it easy. There you go. You're doing it. One more. Wow, you're a beast, man. That was awesome. Thanks. I couldn't have done it without you and Massacre Radio. We're back on Massacre Radio with our guest today, Dark Iron Gaines. Like I said, you know him from his meme page on Instagram, centered around bodybuilding and fitness. Talk a little bit about the impact Dark Iron Gains has had not only on the fitness and bodybuilding community, but the meme community as well. Yeah, it definitely impacted the way people make fitness memes. And I want to say even fitness content, honestly, it's kind of leaked over into like, you know, IRL content too. So it has had its little impact, which is cool. It's been able to kind of grow into that and kind of impact other areas besides, you know, the small little like niche thing it's, it's kind of like just burst into like the mainstream in a, in a sense with other little influences here and there so i think that is cool and yeah it definitely influences a lot of other people's content for sure do you ever fear that with the dark iron gains page that maybe you'll someday hit a threshold of just how much you can grow or maybe like you know another page within the community pops up and just races to the top have you ever considered that or thought about it yeah, I've thought about it. And I think for sure it's, it's going to happen. You know, if anything, I, I think it'd be cool. Like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, it's not a competition. You know, I see it as like, if I influence a page or whatever, and they just do it better than me, to me, it's like, okay, cool. Like they took it to the next step. You know, they took something that I had and they saw, they saw what they could do with it. And it just kind of like grew and, and grew. So I think it's cool to be able to kind of like have some sort of like impact on somebody to where they can take that and kind of do their own thing with it. And that's kind of like my goal, honestly. Like when I did the Iron Games page or the Dark Iron Games page, it was like talking to these other pages, you know, early on. And some of them, they just would like get kind of bitter about other pages kind of taking their style. Instead of me kind of getting like jealous or bitter or whatever, I just kind of like fostered that. And I think that's why now, like I encouraged it and I would share these other pages. And I think that's why now it's kind of like, you know, a whole little genre that's kind of happened. And, you know, I'm trying to kind of, continue to sort of foster that you know i think there's definitely got to be some gatekeeping that happens but for the most part you know i, I try to i try to let it kind of grow organically and if I, if if that stuff out grows me cool you know and if it doesn't then and if i stop doing my page and it totally dies yeah. then that's cool too you know another common thread i noticed in your content was the emphasis on bringing masculinity back to the online masses so i gotta ask you why do you feel it's so important to do so I think the dynamic has shifted. You know, I think it's kind of cool, again, to be like this kind of like more masculine sort of like stoic figure. You know, throughout high school, kind of like it was still sort of cool. But then it like around 2014 is when it like kind of started taking a nosedive for some reason, you know. And I think some of that honestly had to do with the accessibility that people had to the internet at that point, you know, because a lot of people before then weren't terminally online, like smartphones and stuff were a thing, sure, but they, like, by then, everyone had a smartphone. And by then, like, mm -hmm. all the websites and stuff were kind of just condensed into these, like, six or seven apps. So all the, instead of going, like, through the World Wide Web, all these ideas were just kind of like an echo chamber in these six or seven apps, you know, whatever it was back then, you know, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. 
instead of you going across the web, you know, and talking about your ideas to different people and them kind of like talking you down a ledge or, or even talking you up a ledge, whatever, instead of that balance being there, you were finding these apps, these social media apps that were kind of like conducive to your whatever ideas it was you had. And so you find these other, this other community that had the same ideas and it was like a giant echo chamber. So I think a lot of that kind of fostered this stuff that was like anti sort of, you know, I hate to say it, but anti-masculine, very kind of self-destructive. Like I said, the, dy- the dynamics kind of shifted. People aren't as against it as they were, which is great. You know, I'm, I'm, ha- I'm happy it's becoming kind of normal again. I just hope that it continues to go that way. So let's get back to lifting here. You know, I'm old enough to remember the days, you know, some 20, 25 years ago when people were lifting to Metallica, Pantera, you know, Slipknot, Mudvayne, that sort of stuff. What are or were some of the bands that really give you the extra juice for a good pump when you're getting after it? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, it's funny. Whenever, sometimes when I lift, I don't even like listen to metal. Uh, I'll listen to like, I mean, I guess kind of metal. I listen, I listen to like buzz rock sometimes, <laughs> like, you know, like Linkin Park and like just early, like divorced dad rock, which that stuff always hits pretty hard. But when it is like metal though, it's like a lot of beat down stuff. One of my go-tos, World of Pain. A, a lot of these like kind of, they're like kind of like classics, but you know, Vow of Hatred, World of Pain, Enemy Mind, stuff like that. I just listen to everything, honestly. I've gone through, a, I went through a phase where I was listening to like, uh, like Eurobeat, you know, like Eurobeat stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'll listen to Speed Metal. I'll listen to Nightcore sometimes, honestly. Hard style. It just depends on, on what's kind of hidden at the moment. So as I mentioned before, you play guitar in the band Ten Scoops. Were you always musically inclined? And why did you wait until now to do the whole Ten Scoops project? You know, I started playing guitar when I was like 13 or something like that, 13 or 14. I was like more musically inclined at a young age than than really I wanted to, like I wanted to do music more than I wanted to lift Mm -hmm. at a young age. I was in a band a little bit after high school, but at that point I was just kind of like focused more on life, trying to get ahead, trying to to get my career in order, stuff like that. Whenever 10 Scoops (laughs) actually first put out the first single 10 Scoops, I was like, man, I, I, like I had, I had the itch, I had the urge, and I was like, man, I got, I got to get back into it. So, you know, we went to my buddy's studio. He had like the studio set up in his living room, and it was kind of just like a makeshift thing. It wasn't like anything legit, legit, but it was, it was good enough to record. We, uh, we recorded the first Ten Scoop song, which, which is called Ten Scoop, and we put it out. And at that time, I had, I think maybe 10k followers or something like that, and I shared it, and the followers, you know, dug it. And from then on, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to keep trying to do music. You know, at first, I didn't even realize it, but it's like people outside of that were probably going to find it too. I later on realized like, oh, crap, some people listen to this, you know, 10 scoop stuff, and they don't even realize like I have a page. Like they, they don't even know like I have a meme page or whatever. So once again, since we're in the new year, I got to ask you, what's something within Dark Iron Gains or 10 scoops even that you want to accomplish or a goal that you want to meet in the year 2024? Well, with 10 Scoops, we're not really doing too much right now. I actually have a new project. Iron Gains is the new project. Whoa, breaking news here, folks. Is that a Massacre Radio exclusive we have? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm <laughs> announcing it here, but it's uh, it's already out. I have it on Spotify if you want to check it out. It's Iron Gains, and it's called D-Y-E-L Stopia, and it's six songs, and it's doing pretty well. I mean, it's got a decent number of streams, but with Iron Gains, I want to hit one trillion streams, just like BTS, <laughs> like the K, like the K-pop god. <laughs> I like your chances. That's totally realistic. Yeah, yeah. So that, and then with with uh, with Dark Iron Games, the meme page. I just want to keep posting. I'm gonna expand it a little bit. I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna bring. I had a podcast a while back. Nothing crazy. You know, it wasn't crazy production or anything like that, but I'm going to try and bring that back this year with a little bit higher production and a lot more consistency and then uh, just keep going from there. And that's pretty much it. Dark Iron Gains has been my guest. Obviously, you have the Instagram page, but where else can the good folks at home find you? So, yeah, the Dark Iron Gains Instagram. There's also the Dark Iron Gains YouTube channel. There's the Iron Gains backup account, which is iron underscore gains underscore on Instagram. I do have a website, but there's not really much going on there right now. And then I also have the Spotify. You can check out 10 Scoops on Spotify, or you can check out Iron Gains on Spotify. So either one, it's both music that, that I've made. And other than that, that's pretty much all the stuff I have on, on the internet. I know the Dark Iron Gains page on Instagram is wildly popular. Have you ever been contacted about a potential sponsorship or anything like that because of it so actually by the way thanks for asking that because i am right now doing a thing with psychopharma i have a discount code 
uh, for Psychopharma. It's Iron Gains 20 at checkout if you want to get some cool supplements from Psychopharma. They're, they're great. I've, they sent me a bunch of stuff, and their subs are, like, super legit. Hey, you heard it, folks. Check out code Iron Gains 20 How about that? Thanks again for joining us, and all the best to you in the new year, okay? Hey, thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Massacre Radio. Hey, special thanks again to my guest today, Dark Iron Gaines. Go check out his page. As you can see, the guy was pretty cool and couldn't have been more pleasant. Otherwise, that about does it for this episode of Massacre Radio. As always, I've been your host, Members Only Dave, and I'll talk at you next week.